Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of The Bare Bones. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, Night Adder. That's not a long sword on your back. It looks like a, looks like a pole axe. And you'd be right. In fact, not only is that a pole axe, that's the entire Fearless Paladin set. And so what I thought I'd do this morning was do a armor comparison of the Fearless Paladin and the Guardsman. And uh, I'm doing this because as you look at all the uh, set armor pieces, you'll notice that they are designed for a particular playstyle, which may not reflect your own playstyle. And I'm going to get into that. Like, for example, with the longsword, the bonuses are for Mercy of Heaven and Nightly Vows. If you're a guy that generally doesn't use Mercy of Heaven or Nightly Vows, the longsword armor set isn't for you, right? So, and same with the Fearless Paladin set. The bonuses in the Fearless Paladin set demand a certain play style. And, uh, you know, you may not do that play style. So we'll see. Now, before I get started, I want to put a big disclaimer out there. This is not a how to play the Polaxe video. Uh, I am still learning the Polaxe. I played it before, like a year ago. I just leveled it up and, you know, but... but uh, I am by no means an expert in the Polaxe, but what I am going to give you is all the comparisons between the Polaxe at, uh, armor, the Fearless Paladin armor, and the Guardsman armor. And uh, from that point, you'll be able to make up your own mind if you, you know, if you want it or not, depending on your play style. You may decide it is, it is worth it to get, or it's not worth it to get. Uh, and so that's that. So there is gameplay footage here. But I would look at that more as a good laugh to have, because I am by no means an expert with this weapon. But I hope you look at the data I'm going to present and the comparisons I, I present and, and get something out of it in that regard. So here we go. Here's your time stance. Now I'm going to go over the hero traits. Now what I mean by that is where did I put my, my points, right? I, and I put them basically in agility and, and, uh, and uh, strength. And then I'm going to look at the hero weapons. So I'm going to compare the Great Halberd with the Punisher. And then I'm going to compare the armor. All right, so these are all things I'm, I'm going to do to uh, give you a good look at uh, what is there. And, of course, the skills. And the skills are very precise because the skills are what the armor, the bonuses for the armor that it gives you, right? So those things all have to be looked at. Uh, and then we'll go on to a little bit of gameplay and you can have a good laugh at my expense. Okay, so without further ado, let's, let's take a look. So let me just bring up the next slide here. Okay, so here is the traits we're looking at. Now, this slide is for the traits, not the armor, uh, but this is the trait set I'm going to be using while I'm in the, the Fearless Paladin armor. You can see I put like uh, points into agility and strength. Now, I did that because I wanted to have a roughly 2,000 uh, pen and 2,000 uh, damage. And you can see that with the agility, each point increases your piercing damage, slashing armor pen and stuff like that. And when you look at the uh, the strength, you're going to see that it's it's each point of strength increases your hero's piercing armor penetration, slashing damage. You know, so I wanted to be able to have that slashing pen and slashing damage. Now, if this is not the right way to do it, just let me know in the comments below. Like I don't know. Like I said, usually I play a support class. Usually in my long sword, I'm I'm a meatball. I have like all points into toughness so that I can sit there and laugh at at dual blades that come and try to kill me. But with this guy, I wanted to have some decent pen and damage, so that's what I did. Uh, if you're a Polax player and you suggest a different build, let me know. Uh, we can have a good discussion about it. So let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, so here we have a Legendary Punisher and a Great Halberd. I'll go over the stats in a second. For right now, I want to take a look at the ruins. And you and the first one is if your health falls below 50%, your damage output increases by 14%. And to me, that was sounded pretty good, so I threw that in there. The second rune, however, upon entering battle, your maximum health gradually increases over 300 seconds for a maximum of 3,000 points. 300 seconds is five minutes, and it's it's a slow increase, but eventually you get to 3,000 points. So as I look at this, I almost wonder if you want two Punishers, right? You know, one that has uh, this rune that gives you that extra health, because, I mean, at the beginning part of the siege, it can take up to five minutes for things to really get rolling. But after that, you know, once you die that first time, five minutes is a long time to be waiting for 3,000 health. So you would almost, I think, want to swap that out with for something else. But uh, 
that's something I'll do. Maybe I'll make another Punisher and, and see see if I can do that later. But for what I've done in, in the last game sessions I've done, uh, that's the two runes I used. Now you'll also notice about the Great Halberd and the Punisher. The Legendary Punisher and the Great Halberd, just like the Longsword, the, the itemization points are actually pretty similar. And one could argue that depending on what stat you're looking for, the Punisher might even be a little bit better. You know, like if you want critical value, I mean, you've got 34 critical value right there on the Punisher. So it is, it is, it is arguable that they're close. They're close enough that, that, uh, you know, you're not at a severe disadvantage if you have a, a legendary Punisher versus someone with a purple Great Halberd, right? Uh, but let's take a look at the actual differences. And as you can see, I've put them on a nice little slide for you. And uh, the slashing armor pen on the Great Halberd is 1921 and on the Punisher is 1736. And the slashing damage is pretty damn close, you know. You would almost want to use the if you're looking for crit value, the Punisher over the Great Halberd. But, but I, I liked that slashing pen because it was a you know a good 200 more than the the slashing pen on the Punisher, and I liked the fact that the, the, the damage is a little bit more. So I I use the Great Halberd on this. Uh, but like I said, you're not losing much, uh, if anything at all, depending on where you want your itemization points. Now, obviously, if you're going to put a legendary Punisher versus a legendary Great Halberd, there must be some kind of differences, but I have yet to actually see one. Like, I uh, I, I have a lot of legendary uh, weapons, but none of them are the, the class weapon, like the class-specific weapons, like, like the Great Halberd. Uh, comes out of that class-specific plan, sorry, the class-specific plan, whereas your normal rare weapon plan will make all of them the class specific ones just make that one right so one could almost argue depending on whether or not you like the uh bonuses that the fearless paladin armor gives you that instead of using those five plans to make armor you could use those five plans to have five tries at a legendary great halberd but that's something you you'll have to figure out for yourself and hopefully, after you see this video and what I've done with it, uh, you can make that decision. So let's take a look at the armor. Let me bring up that slide. Okay, so don't panic. Uh, <laughs> I have another slide that has everything amalgamated and nicely put together. But if you're the kind of guy that likes to see pure differences, uh, I've got them all laid out side by side. You can pause and take a look at them. And you can see where the random number generator fell uh, when I was creating these things. Now... If you remember my longsword video, uh, the guardsman set I used there is actually different from the one that you see here. Like, for example, you remember I had a blue helmet with my longsword set. Now, and that's because that set was designed for leadership, right? So my leadership point set has 780 leadership, and I've got a blue guardsman helmet because I have yet to get another purple helmet, even though I keep making them over and over again, that has more than the 18 leadership that the blue helmet has so and that's because when i was looking at the long sword i was looking at it as a as a play style of i am there to support the unit right so naturally i want more units and what i'm looking at with the with the pole axe is the unit is there to support me um although when you look when we, we go over the skills i'm not entirely sure that's what this armor is for but Anyway, we'll get into that. So you'll so you'll notice that these this guardsman set, as compared to my old guardsman set or my other guardsman set, sorry, is not a leadership set. And so what that means is I have less units to play with, but that's okay. So let's let's take a look at the entire amalgamized uh, points that the two sets give you. So let's bring up that slide. Now you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, you promised us a better slide, and uh, I do have a better slide. But this is here so that uh, you can check the numbers. Uh, I may have transcribed them wrong into the next slide, but uh, the are obviously the paladins on the left and the guardsmen's on the right. And you'll notice that there's a, a discrepancy in the health, right? That's because even when you're in uh, town, as you spawn in, that health starts to climb. So uh, I'll go over that in the next slide. But uh, that's 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 the the basic slide where I'm getting all the all the data from. <clears throat> now this is the comparative slide. And 
the green numbers are uh, in the middle are the changes reflected from the guardsman to the paladin set, right? So you'll have plus and minuses there. Uh, now the second health number, that's with the rune, you're plus your 3000 health. So as you look at that, you'll notice that the set bonuses are, are, are a big difference, right? So with the paladin set bonuses, it increases weapon dance enemy damage reduction by a further 40%. We'll look at what the skills do in a minute. And four pieces, the Beck de Corbin can strike four enemies. And then the Guardsman set bonuses, of course, everyone knows two pieces increases max health by 5%, which is why your health is so much better. And four pieces increases your defenses by 120 each, which is why, as you look over there, your defenses is so much better, right? So uh, one can easily argue, again, um, that there is not too great of a difference in just the general uh, stats like and again in area other in some areas depending on what you want the guardsman is arguably better uh, so and it seems to be the way to go you know like like for example uh, if you're looking to be a big meatball you know your health is obviously much better with the guardsman because of that extra five percent but when you're looking at your slashing armor penetration obviously your paladin armor is better right the paladin sets better but again, your armor itself is better on the guardsman. So again, it all seems to be depending on what you want. Uh, you're not losing much by swipping, switching from guardsman to paladin. And in fact, because of those set bonuses, you are pigeonholed into a certain play style with the paladin, right? Uh, because you, if you want to get the most out of your paladin armor, you must use Beck to Corbin and you must use Weapon Dance. You have no other choice, right? Uh, and so when you're in this armor, not only are you limited to those two, uh, you must have those two skills, you're also limited to just the poleaxe, right? Because switching out, let's say you want to switch out to a, a short sword because you want to knock someone's wall down, you know, uh, you're not going to get anywhere near the, the benefit out of it as you would by wearing guardsmen because th the paladin set is very specific, right? So just take a, a moment to, to look at those stats and, and, and realize that, like, you know, you might almost be better off. Like if you're a guy that likes to swap your weapons mid fight, you know, wearing the paladin armor, you're stuck. You're absolutely stuck, you know, with Beck to Corbin and weapon dance. Okay. So let's, uh, let's check out the skills. Well, what is Beck to Corbin? What is weapon dance? So let's get that slide up and have a look at those. Okay, so here are the skills that I used in the making of this video. Like I'm wondering maybe if I should have swapped something out for pushback, but anyway, let's let's take a look at weapon dance first. Okay, so it says smash the ground with a half your weapon, inflicting 30% of your base blunt damage plus 486 points of blunt damage. Extra effect, for five seconds, any enemy affected has their attack reduced by 40% and their movement speed by 20%. And extra effect, each hit on enemy reduces damage by 4%, stackable up to 10 times, lasts 5 seconds. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if you use Weapon Dance and only two guys are affected, two enemies are affected, like you're deep in your own line and you use the Weapon Dance, uh, you're going to get maybe 8 to 16% damage reduction for 5 seconds. So to get the most out of Weapon Dance, you need to be able to affect the most enemy bots you pop it in your lines does nothing so you literally have to step into the front pop it and then hope it works or well sorry it does work but like hope you can get back in time because what i've found because i'm trying to get that maximum 80 percent because remember the paladin gives you another 40 percent so for five seconds enemy effect has an attack reduced by 80 percent right so i want to you know catch as many bots as possible that, right? So I want 10 bots because uh, that'll give them a maximum damage reduction and they'll all get that minus 80% attack. I imagine that's attack speed, but it doesn't quite say it just as attack. So you want to be able to tag as many bots as possible. The optimum being at least 10. So you need to be stepping as close as possible to do that. And of course, when you do that, you're in their line and the heroes has a tendency to, 
you know, wreck my face. So it is very difficult to get in and get that, 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 that 80% for what amounts to five seconds. Right. But you have to use it because that's what the Paladin set is. And of course you look over at Beck to Corbin. It says, uh, execute a horizontal stroke, 105% of your slashing damage plus 1791 points of slashing damage. Right. So basically you're going to do 3000 damage. Press twice, continue the attack with the left jab, which inflicts 120% of your base slashing, plus 1991 points of slashing damage. Press three times, finish with a right jab, which causes 140% of your base slashing damage, plus 2191 points of slashing damage. Extra effect. Each hit on an enemy increases damage by 5% stackable up to 10 times, last three seconds. So using this on a single player will only give you an extra 5% damage, right? So this is obviously a, uh, you know, an AOE, but that's a lot of damage pressed twice, pressed three times. So you could theoretically use it quite, quite well on, on a single player, but to get that extra effect of up to 50% more damage, you have to hit bots. So you have to run in and hit all the goddamn bots you can hit. And again, the more bots you hit, the higher the damage goes what and of course that means you're in their line and that makes you vulnerable right and so you're going to see some gameplay footage where you know <laughs> it's 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 going to be funny all right so grim harvest three so i chose that over pushback because i like rough justice and so what i'll do is i'll charge a guy with rough justice i'll hit him with that and then i'll switch to grim harvest three if if this isn't the way to go, let me know. But that's what I've been doing. Maybe I should use pushback. I, I don't know. Or lock bar strike. I, I don't know. But I chose Rough Justice and Grim Harvest 3. Uh, and uh, so those are the skills I've used. So let's head over and watch some gameplay footage of me trying to get this to work. Um, one thing you'll notice is that there'll be brief periods, assuming I don't cut it out, of where I'm just standing there looking like an idiot. And that's because a situation will happen, and uh, my reflexes are all longsword. So I'll be like, ah, oh, this is happening. I don't have to do with this. Oh, wait, I'm not in the longsword. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll kind of freeze up because I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Because I've played longsword so much that my reflexes are, 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 are set. You know, situation A happens, I respond with reflex B, you know, that kind of thing, right? So this is all a new experience for me. So take it for what it is, but I hope you enjoy it. I mean, it's still going to be some play of me trying to do stuff, but I mean, I would, I would not call it, you know, this is the definitive way to play Polax because it's not, I'm still learning, but Hey, maybe you can get a good laugh out of it. So let's take a look. Okay. So this first little bit is, is kind of amusing. I, I included it because this is my very first battle and I go to charge and I use weapon dance. And why do I use Weapon Dance? Well, I use Weapon Dance because it's the same button as Nightly Vows, which I always tap as soon as I hit the charge button. So at this point, my muscle memory is still hasn't quite uh, synced up with this guy. And again, I, I miss. But the good news is I still know how to play the unit. So uh, my unit was able to get these kills, not necessarily me, although I did do a little bit of rough justice here. Uh, but I found that even though my personal play was average, uh, if I knew how to play the unit, I still did, you know, fairly decently. And now here was another one, like this guy came in and just knocked me on my ass, right? I'm trying to get in to do a, a, a weapon dance and I miss. The only reason I won this fight is because I, I, I popped the claymore abilities and then uh, this is a blue unit I'm up against. But that, that other Polax guy just outplayed me. He had me on my butt before I even knew he was there, kind of thing. But if this other Polax had, friendly Polax had me shot up, I, I would have probably got wrecked. But I mean, like I said, 52 kills there. The unit itself does fine. It's it's my own play that, that is substandard. But at least I know how to use the unit, so it, it sort of, you know, makes up for it. Now this is interesting. I'm going to do a charge and... Uh, one of uh, one of the guys in the in my Claymore's video had mentioned that he uses Weapon Dance when he pulls out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so when he's trying to retreat out. So so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to use Weapon Dance on the way in, but I'm also going to hang back. I won't need it, but that's why when you see me hanging back, 
as I send my unit back to the supply point, that's because I'm I'm waiting to see if I need to use weapons dance to get my guys out. Because this is usually a longer charge than I normally do. Like this is usually I try to charge, you know, with friendlies behind me when I'm using claymores, but I'm I'm gonna do this like this anyway. And I'm gonna go in. And of course this these last few men at arms coming with me. Now I come in. I use the freedom. There's weapons dance. Play more strike was on. A little bit of, a little bit of rough justice there. I did use back to Corbin, and then I try to get out. Now I see my weapon dance is coming, so I'm hanging back because I'm gonna, if I need to, I'll use it. But I didn't need to. And again, remember this is these are shots of me. It was really difficult not to put shots of my units doing really well, because that's. That's not what this is for. This is to showcase me trying to use the armor. Bad or not, right? So there are, you know, really good shots of me wrecking people with the unit, but that's not the point of the of this of this thing, right? You know, you can see where I use weapon dance. I'm using Vector Corbin. Uh, I use shock attack on the unit, but that doesn't matter because that's not what this is for. Kind of 48 kills. Uh, this is the same battles with the Claymores, so not that many more. I basically threw this Condi unit away, and then I died here. I don't know what the hell happened there, but but uh, again, I was trying to get in and see how well that, that works, right? Another Condi fight. This is kind of amusing, because again, this is one of those where I, I get where I'm going, and I what am I doing now? I stand here like an idiot, because I'm like, uh, what abilities do I have? And then I remember, oh yeah, I have back to Corbin, so you know, I come in and start using that. But I should have been using it right away. Line up for the charge. So I've used back to Corbin already. A little bit of rough justice. But I got knocked on my butt somehow, I don't remember. Don't see how, how that happened. But but we sit here and we, we uh, cap the point. But like again, you notice how I'm playing the unit fine because like Buddy came at me, I, I dropped my unit on him uh, to let the unit do the do the killing kind of thing. And it's funny, like right now I'd be popping a heal <laughs> if I was in a longsword, you know. Uh, and it, it's it's funny because the weapon dance used to heal you, like they obviously removed that. But I remember the weapon dance healing you at one point because. Um, That wasn't me healing me. That was that longsword guy threw that heal down. But the weapon dance used to heal you. It doesn't anymore. So I tried to get these claymores, but my charge kind of misses. And I, I thought about letting it go after those Rattaz running away, but I realized that uh, on the right, the uh, claymores were at walking speed. So I decided I'm going to go kill them. Even though I don't have my charge up, I just put the guys right on it and I hit shock attack. I hit weapons dance, then I hit bark to carbon, and I figured it was it was worth it. Um, or I hit weapons dance there, but I think it was worth it to trade the Condi unit for the Claymore unit, because the Claymore unit done right can be pretty deadly, right? So I that's why I, I sacrificed the Condi unit to, to kill this guy, and uh, a little bit of uh, rough love, <laughs> so a little tough love there. I kill that guy there. So like even though it cost the entire. Uh, Condi unit to kill those guys. That's why I took that decision. But again, I, I was using the abilities. I'm switching to Paladins. Now, Paladins, I thought, worked fairly decently with the the with the Polacks because they have that self-heal, right? I like having units that have self-heals. Or I like being able to heal the unit. You know, it just keeps it going a little bit longer, right? And they're tanky. Like, like they took all those grenades. It's just a little, like maybe 10% damage, 15% damage off some of them, at the most. You know. So, being the coward I am, I wait till everybody else goes in, and then I go. Heat through the self heal, do the charge, hit the, the weapon dance. I got knocked back, but I managed to get it off. Kill the player. A little back to Corbin going off. You can see the damage just start to increase because I'm hitting more and more and more. And I'm getting kills racking up, right? So 
I think it, it works fairly decently with the Paladins because I can I can stay interlocked with the Paladins. Now, the one thing I didn't try, uh, unfortunately, was using a unit that has cover me. Because uh, most of the units with cover me now um, are the older units, like the, the men at arms. I never did take a men at arms unit with, with these guys. Now, this is funny. This is me, my first attempt at using uh, a wall. Because I thought, well, that weapon dance, you know, that might help, right? And I actually brought it up to look at it because I was like, uh, how, do, how does that work again? Because this is one of the earlier matches. I'm like, okay, how does that work? So uh, I just couldn't get it to work, to be honest, because you have to be standing uh, inside the enemy to tag as many bots as possible. And you only get like five seconds of their damage being reduced by 80% if you manage to tag enough bots. So uh, I've only got two examples of walls here. Because I couldn't get the walls to work. I mean, if you're a Polax guy and you know how to get it to work, by all means, put it in the comments. But I just felt that I could have done better if I was in a longsword. I'm certainly not killing anything, that's for sure. I used Weapons Dance, but I was too deep in my, my uh, lines for it to be any effective. Back to Corbin. You can see I just couldn't recover after that initial push in. I mean, they're taking their time dying because they are Imperial Spearmen. And I do have a little bit of points into their unit tree. So they are a bit more tanky than, than uh, a normal unit, but not by much. So here's some maidens. Now, these maidens, they're on the spear line right now. And the uh, doctrines for them are all shield do doctrines. So it's got, uh, you know, I think shield doctrine 2 and 3 or 1 and 2, something like that. And, of course, the uh, defense doctrine. So they're, they're pretty tanky. They got the block doctrine, you know. Uh, so I decided to try and use them as a shield wall. So I figured I'll come up here and protect these guys. So I, I, I'm wondering if maybe the philosophy should be to, to play the unit and use your abilities as they come up, as they come up. Whereas what I've been trying to do in these videos is play the play the hero and try and use the abilities uh, and force the the force the match into those abilities. Right? Where maybe maybe my my philosophy is wrong. I should just play the unit, and if the the uh, opportunity presents itself to use an ability, use that ability instead of trying to force it. And that's what I've been doing, is I've been trying to force those those abilities. Um, in these in these fights, my I I did uh, actually get like top five a lot. Uh, I got middling a lot and I got bottom a few times. Uh, but I think that's that's basically based on the units I was using as opposed to my own personal play. It's skipping forward in time just a little bit here. Do a quick little charge. I don't go with them because I have no intention of, of uh, following it up. I'm just going to bring them back. I just didn't want them sitting there taking shots for free, right? So I thought, okay, I'll just charge them out, push them back a bit, and come back. So going over here, buff the area, did a little bit of weapon dance. Try to do a rough justice there, but I miss. But you can see my units are getting kills. Uh, the reason it's at 96 is because this is actually uh, the second unit I pulled. Uh, the first one I pulled was Iron Reapers. In this particular run, I had Iron Reapers and Maidens. The Iron Reapers did pretty, pretty well. I didn't put them in because all they were killing was silver, purple units. They weren't really going after anything big. And in this part, I'm trying to show the, the wall style.
But now this is interesting, right? I use the... I think about charging, I don't. Change my mind, switch to the spear. Because I can see my guys are pretty wounded. But I do that, and then they come charging in. Weapon dance, right? Luckily enough, all the friendly players were here, so it, it, it didn't... Uh, could have been a lot worse. But I, I, I started to think like I could do it that way instead. As the charge comes in, the weapon dance hits, right? So, uh, But I, I really found that I didn't really like playing walls with the Polax, so I probably won't experiment with that in the future because I just uh, I just find that uh, uh, I'm so used to the longsword and I know how to use the longsword that I just can't figure out what moves to use protecting a wall with a with a poleaxe and by all means if you're a poleaxe player in the comments please but that's pretty much it I mean this is the this is uh my gameplay video. Hope you had a good laugh. Um, this is funny though, actually. My, my maidens are going to get back here just in time to, to participate in this last little bit. Weapon dance. That was good. Where's the maidens? I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them. I sent them back to get reps. I like not to drop that. Instead, I'm going to... I think this is the, the battle's ending, so we just go out and chase. I want to chase these guys down because they got their back to me, right? That's always a, a good run when you have someone give, them, give you their back. <laughs> Normally, I would hit Nightmare Bows right here and the charge would be 25% quicker, but... Kind of halfway misses, but hey, I break 100. That's good. I tell him to get way up there. Pop the, the shield bash. That's always nice. Now here, if I was a... Uh, I did use the, the guardian protection there, so that was kind of cool. But if I was a longsword here, I would have just gone into clash of shields, knocked the whole circle down, and then had everybody just go in and like, free attack. Uh, but there we go. That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Had a good laugh. If you got any pointers, by all means, put them in the comments. I'd uh, be looking forward to, re to reading them. But uh, for right now, I want to make an announcement. My next video is going to be the, the bare bones guide to, to murder. So that should be coming at you in a couple of weeks. Three tops, but I, I think I can probably get it done in a couple of weeks. And uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.